We've had a lot of fun here on the Shade Chamber tonight, but now it's time for our favorite segment. This is a segment that we're going to keep bringing into any Inazuma-related story beat entitled, There is no W in Tengu. I don't think anyone in Genshin Impact in the entire setting has a worse batting average, has a worse KD ratio than one Kujo Sara. Uh, in the game proper, we just see her taking L's like it's her job. So... <laughs> <laughs> this segment is dedicated to us looking at what has recently happened in the world of Inazuma and determining whether or not Sara took an L this week. We should actually start at the beginning of her character then, um, just so we can kind of contextualize Ujo, Sara, Colin, a life of failure. Uh, so actually, uh, Beefy, you're most familiar with her backstory. Can you elaborate on her humble beginnings? Yes, this is all cobbled together from reading her character story notes and just kind of looking at the in-game beats of the story itself. Uh, we know she started out as a kid on Mount Yogo. Uh, first thing she does is she gets completely thrashed by monsters and thrown off a cliff. Her wings are injured in the process, possibly permanently because, as far as we know, we have never seen her fly. As she's falling off this cliff, she makes a plea to the heavens to preserve her life. And which is ultimately granted in the form of an electrovision. This event has two ripples affecting her life. Number one, she devotes her life to the god who she thinks gave her this vision, but in fact was completely uninvolved in this event that saved her life and gave her meaning. And also, her eating shit off the mountain results in her horrible adopted dad, Kujo Takayuki, taking her in, raising her in a loveless childhood as a child soldier. Absolutely no familial fondness or entitlements, uh, while her two brothers, his biological son, kind of get the accolades and status associated with the Kujo clan. <laughs> well, she does nothing but the work. So, um, among Kujo Sara's elf, I think the ones that stand out in particular with just her general failure to uh, stymie the very obvious corruption in the Tenryo Commission, uh, which, of course, concluded with her lying face down, almost full Yamcha pose, in the <laughs> Shogun's foyer, which is my personal favorite among her elves. It's truly iconic. I think that's definitely the one that keeps her up at night. You know, she's she's fallen off to sleep in her little nest, and then... That just pops into her brain, and suddenly she's not going back to sleep for an hour because she's too horrified. I like to think she sleeps with, on one foot, like a flamingo, on her big tango shoes. That's the thing, right? She takes losses at all levels. Like, it's not just, you know, failing at, like, wartime tactics or being on the wrong side of history. It's things like getting shipped with a crayon-eating moron or getting outmaneuvered by a Chinese Hannah Montana. So it's not just, like, you know, the big L's that she's taking. It's all, like, L's big and small. Like, the day-to-day -day things. It's embarrassing. And it's constant. That's the best part. The arguments she has with people in public via the fine post are, like, classic mall cop behavior a little bit. You just have a very narrow area in which you're, in quotes, enforcing the law when really you're just getting into public arguments with rowdy citizens. She's kind of the the Paul Blart of Inazuma. <laughs> it, like, imagine just that little hat on her head, like, as, like, one of those, like, visors, you know? <laughs> Scooting around on a little golf cart, patrolling the mall. Because <laughs> we know what? she can't fly. Oh, God, that's right. She can't fly. It is wild that we have a character whose entire gimmick in this game is bad luck and terrible things happening to him. And yet he takes fewer on-screen L's than Sara. I think that's what makes it even sadder because Benny wears his L's on his sleeve. It's a huge part of how cheerful he is because he's kind of a nihilist he's just like well if nothing matters i might as well have fun and try to make friends uh, sara just has to bear it all she cannot let it get to her because she will implode she has no friends because she was raised in a horribly emotionally neglectful family and is you know basically a regime officer so she's completely unapproachable and the one person that she respects and looks up to doesn't even really know who she is. She's just like, oh, yes, my general. 
I don't know oh, if Raiden even really knows anything about Sara, because in her voice line, she's like, Oh, yes, the Kujo Tengu, she's a great warrior, and she'll be a great heir for the clan and its future prosperity. When, like, number one, Wait. we know the clan's on the shit list, and number two, she's super not in the line of succession. Uh, it's just, it just doesn't look good for her on any front, and it just doesn't seem to be getting better. Sara's first appearance was in Kazuha's animatic as this stoic, formidable figure, the Shogun's right hand. The one who dueled Kazuha's friend on behalf of her god. And to see her <laughs> reduced to a mall cop who manages just elementary school level juvenile delinquents and then ends up getting shipped with... I cannot think of anyone who has suffered more disrespect in this universe. Sorry, I was just thinking about the amount of disrespect. Me too. It's, it's a lot. That is a lot. So anyway, that's a bit of background on Kujo Sara, the Wharf of Genshin. But we're here to see if she took an L this episode. To answer that, we have to check out Kokomi's character quest. Specifically, the part with the peace talks between the Sangonomiya Separatists and the Shogunate's Tenryo Commission. Because, while Kokomi's character quest didn't do a lot for Kokomi's character, she still came away from it looking a lot better than Kujo Sara. Alright, so, they're at the peace talks. There's these, these two Watatsumi guys. They have come to this with the intention of raising a shitstorm. They're like, we are going to press false accusations of the Tenryo Commission, colluding with the Fatui, so that the peace talks completely implode, because we are fight-happy maniacs. We want everything to go back to open warfare with the Shogunate. They're just making this up. It's all bullshit. It is a pretense to keep fighting. Except... And guess what? Those two rabble-rousers on the Sangonavia side, they just happened to be right. Unbeknownst to everyone, they were correct. There were rogue Tenryo agents colluding with the Fatui. The same people who almost ruined this country. The same people who specifically put Kujo Sara on her ass and are indirectly responsible for her clan's fall from grace. And under her leadership, they did it again. <laughs> God. Can't believe it. Her fucking face. <laughs> 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 She's just so fucking done with this shit. In front of the person she's negotiating with during the peace talks? How embarrassing. You think she would have gotten a little bit more weary after all of the like things that were exposed during the Archon quest? Like, she was fully wary. That is why she is so pissed. Believe me, she would have given her soul to prevent this from happening again. But mm. she can't get anything done effectively. So, with the absolute shit circus of the peace talks behind her, the future's not really looking great for this Tengu, but we'll be behind her, rooting for her all the way, that maybe one day there will be a W in Tengu. But it's not this day, and it's definitely not any other day that I could possibly even imagine. I think that was good. Yeah, yeah. That's well, also, we have, well done. we have to wrap up the whole episode. I was gonna. Wow. I was hoping somebody would chime in. It's been a lot of me talking. <laughs> well, we can just um, like we can just do that now then. All right. No, no, um. Okay. So, uh, should I redo the outro then? Yeah. Let's start from the top. Okay. Cool. Get the fuck out. Perfect. Yeah, so does uh, anyone among us want to... Uh, fuck. Amogus. Amogus. Uh, from the top, from the top, because uh, I distracted myself with stupidity.